Yeah, it means a lot. You know, I've worked so hard for this opportunity, and uh, you know, it's a it's a dream come true. So, um, now every week I just approach it like it's my last week playing and um, try to have fun. In trouble again. He's able to escape. Keeps the play alive. Get this, Taylor Heineke set an NCAA Division I record with 730 yards passing. Taylor Heineke on a four-game wow. streak and just being clutch as he can get. Taylor Heineke is so special. Taylor Heineke in that offense finds ways to exploit the defense. He was unbelievable on the football field. Taylor Heineke. Taylor Heineke. Taylor Heineke. Taylor Heineke. Taylor Heineke was born on March 15, 1993 in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Unfortunately, after searching for hours, I could not find a single thing about his childhood. Taylor Heineke attended Collins Hill High School where he played football. He would play varsity for two years where he put up insane numbers and dare I say one of the best seasons in Georgia high school football history. When you think of some of the best high school quarterbacks from Georgia, you might think of Deshaun Watson, Trevor Lawrence, Fran Tarkenton, but nobody mentions Taylor Heineke. And it's mainly because he was overlooked for his size, standing at 5'11", only 185 pounds. Despite this, he was an all-state selection as a junior after leading his team to a 10-4 record and a trip to the 5A semifinals. His senior Senior year was a different story. Heineke was named the Old Spice Player of the Year in the state of Georgia. Now, this award is presented to the best high school varsity athlete of each state, so only one person per state. His senior year, he put up video game numbers. He passed for 4,218 yards and 44 touchdowns. How often do you hear high school quarterbacks throwing for that many yards and touchdowns? When Heineke threw for 4,200 yards, that ranked the second most in state history. Now, he ranks ninth all time, which of course makes sense since football is so pass heavy now. And the 44 passing touchdowns in a single season, that ranked second most at the time as well. And now he is currently tied for 11th, but having the second most passing yards and passing touchdowns in a single season in state history should get you insanely recruited, right? Well, that wasn't the case for Taylor Heineke. Again, his size is what caused him to get overlooked. Imagine having one of the best seasons in Georgia state history, being the only player in the state to receive the Old Spice Player of the Year award and not even being ranked as a top 180 of your recruiting class. Now granted, there are a lot of people in this recruiting class that you will recognize. Guys like Braxton Miller, Jadavian Clowney, Teddy Bridgewater, Nick Marshall, Haha -Ha Clinton Dix, Johnny Manziel, Dak Prescott, Jarvis Landry, Sammy Watkins, and Ryan Chazier. So I guess you can say it kind of makes sense, but how are you the only player in the state of Georgia to receive the Old Spice Player of the Year award and you don't even make the top 180? Anyways, Heineke's only offer was from Old Dominion University. He never got sought out by colleges. Instead, his dad made a highlight video and physically mailed it to 250 colleges around the East Coast. Heineke's recruiting story with Old Dominion actually began as his senior year in high school kicked off. A man named Alonzo Brandon, who was in charge of Old Dominion's development development and alumni relations had just finished watching a game between Old Dominion and Monmouth University. He had just boarded a shuttle van and was on his way to the airport. Next to him was Earl Williams, who was a personal trainer in the Atlanta area. Williams started making small talk and asked Brandon if he had a kid that played at Old Dominion. Then Williams mentioned that he was working with a young quarterback who is on the verge of a breakout season. And boy was he right. The two men exchanged business cards and Williams called Taylor Heineke's father and told him to send Old Dominion film and to do it now. That's how Heineke got his offer from Old Dominion. Now, moving on to Taylor Heineke's freshman year, he was the backup quarterback to Thomas DeMarco before taking over week five when DeMarco was taken out of the game due to an ankle injury. He would finish out the regular season with a 5-1 record as a starter, throwing for 1,700 yards, 15 touchdowns, and only one interception. This was enough to propel Old Dominion to a 9-2 record and a spot in the NCAA FCS playoffs. Heineke would play outstanding, leading his team to a victory while throwing for 270 yards and 5 touchdowns. In the second round, Heineke would ball out once again, throwing for 350 yards and 5 touchdowns. But unfortunately, his team would lose in a shootout 48-55 to Georgia Southern, ending his rookie season. 
His freshman year was spectacular. He threw for 2,285 yards, 25 touchdowns, and get this, only one interception. On top of that, he also ran for 360 yards and four touchdowns. So as a true freshman, he had 29 total touchdowns to only one interception. Absolutely incredible. Heineke was named to the All-CAA third team and was the National Freshman Performer of the Year. Also, a little fun fact, Heineke punted in college a little. He finished his freshman year with 4 punts for 170 yards, which is about 43 yards per punt. Not too bad. And unfortunately, as Taylor Heineke wrapped up his incredible freshman season, he was soon hit with horrible news. The day before he was going to return home for winter break, Brett Heineke, Taylor's father, passed away of a heart attack. Heineke and his father were best friends, and him and his dad would always watch football games on Sundays, and his dad was the reason he was a Packers fan growing up. Moving on to his sophomore year, it was nothing short of spectacular. Heineke threw for an FCS record, 5,076 yards, along with 44 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. Add on 11 rushing touchdowns and 470 rushing yards. So a total of 5,500 all-purpose yards, 55 touchdowns, and only 14 interceptions. During the season against New Hampshire, Heineke passed for an FCS Division I record, 730 yards, along with 5 touchdowns. This season, he was awarded the Walter Payton Award, Associated First Team All-American, CAA Offensive Player of the Year, the Sports Network First Team All-American, Phil Steele First Team All-American, Touchdown Blub of Columbus Player of the Year, the Dudley Award winner, which is awarded to the best Division I player in Virginia, and First Team All-CAA Quarterback. Yeah, a whole mouthful. He led his team to a 10-1 record and a first round bye in the NCAA FCS playoffs. In the second round, Heineke once again went off. He threw for 497 yards, 6 touchdowns, rushed for 52 yards, and 2 rushing touchdowns. So uh, yeah, 550 total yards and 8 total touchdowns. Really impressive. Old Dominion defeated Coastal Carolina 63-35 to advance to the quarterfinals, once again facing none other than Georgia Southern. Heineke would throw for 420 yards and 3 touchdowns. However, this was not enough to propel Old Dominion as they fell to Georgia Southern 49-35. Nonetheless, an extremely impressive and decorative season for Taylor Heineke. Topping his sophomore year might never happen again, but nonetheless, Heineke still had a good season. He led Old Dominion to an 8-4 record record where he passed for 4,000 yards, 33 touchdowns, and 8 interceptions. Also tack on 348 rushing yards and 5 touchdowns. Another milestone Heineke hit was he became just the 18th quarterback from Division 1 to pass for 10,000 career yards and rush for 1,000. His senior year took a bit of a dip from his efficient junior year. He led Old Dominion to a 6-6 six six record, throwing for 3,400 yards and a career low 30 touchdowns and career high 16 interceptions also posting career lows in 139 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns. Ironically though, he punted for a career high 14 punts for 661 yards. I still find it very interesting that Heineke punted in college. Despite having an average senior year, you would think a decorated and record-setting quarterback like Taylor Heineke would get him at least some recognition to get drafted. However, this was not the case. Heineke went undrafted in the 2015 NFL Draft, but was signed by the Minnesota Vikings as an undrafted free agent. He would compete for a backup spot, but eventually after a year of being the third string quarterback and not seeing any playing time, the Vikings would eventually release Heineke in September of 2017. His next stint was 12 days later with the New England Patriots where he was signed to the practice squad and then released three weeks later. Then a month and a half later, Heineke was signed to the Houston Texans practice squad and was promoted to the active roster as the backup quarterback. Finally, on December 25th, 2017, he would make his NFL debut against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Started TJ Yates, suffered a possible concussion, and Heineke went into the game. He completed one pass and then sadly suffered a concussion as well. TJ Yates went right back into the game after he cleared concussion protocol. So yeah, that's really gotta suck. You finally get your chance to make your NFL debut and you suffer a concussion. Then in April of 2018, the Texans would wave Taylor Heineke. So let's recap Heineke's NFL experience so far. In three years, he has been on three different teams, has been cut from all of them, completed his first NFL pass in his debut, and suffered a concussion. 
Not an ideal way to start off your NFL career, but let's continue. Three days later, after being cut by the Texans, the Carolina Panthers would claim Heineke off waivers. He would end up being the backup quarterback to Cam Newton and appeared in five games coming in for a player or two when Cam Newton got injured, but that was it. With Cam Newton dealing with shoulder soreness leading into week 16, Cam Newton was then ruled out for the remainder of the season and Taylor Heineke was named the starter for week 16 against the Atlanta Falcons. In his first NFL start, he threw for 274 yards yards, one touchdown, and three interceptions. Sadly, Heineke suffered an elbow injury and was replaced by Kyle Allen the rest of the game. Heineke's first start ended in a loss and an injury, and the following season, he was cut during final roster cuts. With him being a free agent and the XFL coming into the scene, Heineke was picked up by the St. Louis Battlehawks right before the XFL 2020 draft. Hoping for a new start and a chance to prove himself, Heineke never saw the field and the XFL was suspended in April of 2020 due to COVID-19, leaving Heineke jobless once again. At this point in Heineke's life, he just wanted to play football and he couldn't do that. After the XFL, he reached out to Scott Turner, who was the quarterback's coach when Heineke was in Minnesota and Carolina. Heineke asked Turner if there were any open coaching spots. Turner responded and said, You got to get your degree first, don't retire just yet. With COVID happening, you don't know what's going to happen, you're not done yet. So after this phone call, Heineke enrolled back into Old Dominion for the fall of 2020 to finish his math degree. Since he was taking these classes online, he moved back home to live with his sister and her husband in Georgia. There, he was still working out and pushing himself every day to stay ready if he got the call. Eventually, after months of waiting, he got that call. Heineke was signed to the Washington Commanders practice squad on December 8th to be the emergency COVID quarterback. Now, at this point, Heineke was taking his finals to finish up the semester at Old Dominion. He had two finals left, so he emailed the professors and asked them if he could take them after the season was over. Anyways, let me give you some background on the commander's quarterback situation at the moment. Alex Smith was the starting quarterback and Dwayne Haskins was the backup. Then during week 14, Alex Smith got hurt, so Dwayne Haskins took over to finish the game. Week 15, Heineke was promoted to the active roster and named the backup quarterback as Dwayne Haskins was named the starter and Alex Smith was still dealing with recovery. Week 16, Dwayne Haskins was benched for Heineke after a poor performance. Then the very next day after the game, Dwayne Haskins was released due to his poor performance and off the field issues, breaking COVID-19 protocols. But for week 17, Alex Smith was back and healthy and named the starter where they eventually clinched the NFC East and a playoff spot against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. However, Heading into the playoffs, Alex Smith was questionable and was dealing with a lingering leg bone bruise injury. Heineke took first team reps and on the day of the game, about 4 hours before kickoff, Heineke was named the starter. Now coming into this game, I had no idea Alex Smith wasn't starting until I sat down to watch the game. Once I saw this kid named Taylor Heineke wasn't at quarterback, I thought, who the hell is this kid? And I'm sure that's what most of the people watching the game thought. But in just his second career NFL start in the playoffs, on one of the brightest stages in football, he showed the world who Taylor Heineke was. He would go off for someone in their second career start, throwing for 306 yards, one touchdown, and one interception, along with 46 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown. Mind you, Heineke did this against a top 10 defense in Tampa Bay, who would eventually win the Super Bowl. And you could argue that this was the toughest game for the Bucks in their Super Bowl run. A backup quarterback in their second career start put up a better fight than Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, and Patrick Mahomes. Following the wildcard loss, Heineke's life changed for the better. He signed a two-year $4.75 million extension with the Commanders and also had a partnership with the alcohol beverage, you guessed it, Bud Light. Yeah, not Heineken, even though it kind of makes sense. Despite putting on an incredible performance in the postseason, Heineke would not be named the starter for the next season. He would be the backup for Ryan Fitzpatrick, who the commander signed in the offseason. In a unfortunate but fortunate situation for Heineke, Fitzpatrick suffered a hip injury in the first game of the season, ruling him out for the year. Heineke would then play the rest of the season as a starter, leading the Commanders to a 7-8 record in games he started. He would throw for 3,400 yards, 20 touchdowns to 15 interceptions. Not too bad and pretty average stats for someone in their first full year as being a starter. However, the Commanders were still not sold on Heineke and went out during the offseason and traded for Carson Wentz. Heineke knew that he was going to be a backup and he embraced his role quite well. The season went on and Heineke did not see any playing time as the commanders were at a horrible 2-4 record. However, Heineke got another chance. 
Carson Wentz suffered a fractured finger during a Thursday night matchup win against the Chicago Bears, placing him on IR. Heineke then led the Commanders from a 2-4 record to a 7-6-1 record, keeping the Commanders just inside the playoffs. He completely flipped the script, showing the Commanders that he's still a winner. Then, during Week 16 against the San Francisco 49ers, Heineke would get benched for Carson Wentz late in the fourth quarter. I couldn't find the tweet, but it was reported that Heineke was pissed on the sideline. Now, he didn't play horrible this game if you look at his stats here. And mind you, this is against the number one defense in the NFL. Anyways, following Heineke getting benched, he wouldn't play the rest of the season, and it looks as if the Commanders found themselves a franchise quarterback for the next couple of years in Sam Howell. Heineke is set to be a free agent, and given that the Commanders have Sam Howell and Carson Wentz, he might be headed into free agency. Despite everything, Heineke has had an amazing story. From only receiving one scholarship offer, to losing his dad and being told he's too small, to finally getting a shot, to play in the NFL, and living out his dream. I'd say it's a pretty good story. I wonder where Heineke will end up in the offseason and if he gets another shot to play. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and as always, I will see you all next video.